Have you ever heard someone say third time lucky or third time's the charm? It means that if you try to do something once and then twice with no success, you shouldn't give up. Because if you just try one more time, it might work. Because we think of the number three as a lucky number. That's why so many stories, especially fairy tales, have three characters or three wishes or three gifts. And you may also have noticed that this story is the third story in the month of August that has something to do with the number three. Hello everyone, I'm Kathleen Pelly. Welcome to Journey with Story. Today's story is a very old English fable. That means it's a story that teaches us a lesson about how to live our lives. And it's about three little pigs who build their houses in three different ways. But it's the third house that is definitely the third time lucky. Now you've probably heard this story before, but it's one of those tales that's fun to tell and to hear over and over again. You might even want to try and join in with me at the parts you know. Let's take a journey with the three little pigs. Once upon a time, there was an old mother pig who had three little pigs and not enough food to feed them. So when the pigs were old enough, she sent them out into the world to seek their fortunes. Now the first little pig was very lazy. He didn't want to work at all. And so he built his house out of straw. The second little pig worked a little bit harder, but he was somewhat lazy too. And so he built his house out of sticks. Then they sang and they danced and they played together the rest of the day. But the third little pig worked hard all day long and he built his house with bricks. It was a sturdy house, complete with a fine fireplace and chimney. It looked like it could withstand the strongest winds. The next day a wolf happened to pass by the lane where the three little pigs lived and he saw the straw house and he smelled the pig inside. He thought the pig would make a mighty fine meal and his mouth began to water so he knocked on the door and he said Little pig, little pig, let me in, let me in. But the little pig saw the wolf's big paws through the keyhole, so he answered back, No, 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 not by the hairs of my chinny chin chin. Then the wolf showed his teeth and he said, Then I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house down. So he huffed and he puffed and he blew the house down. The wolf opened his jaws very wide and bit down as hard as he could. But the first little pig escaped and he ran away to hide with the second little pig. The wolf continued down the lane and he passed by the second house made of sticks. And he saw the house and he smelled the pigs inside and his mouth began to water as he thought about the fine dinner they would make. So he knocked on the door and he said, Little pigs, little pigs, let me in, let me in. But the little pigs saw the wolf's pointy ears through the keyhole, so they answered back, No, 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 not by the hairs on her chinny chin chin. So the wolf showed his teeth and he said, Then I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house down. So he huffed. And he puffed and he blew the house down. The wolf was greedy and he tried to catch both pigs at once. But he was too greedy and he got neither. His big jaws clamped down on nothing but air. And the two little pigs scrambled away as fast as their little hooves would carry them. The wolf chased them down the lane and he almost caught them. But they made it to the brick house and slammed the door closed before the wolf could catch them. The three little pigs were very frightened. They knew the wolf wanted to eat them. And that was true. The wolf hadn't eaten all day. And he had worked up a large appetite chasing the pigs around. And now he could smell all three little pigs inside. And he knew that they would make a lovely feast. 
so the wolf knocked on the door and he said, little pigs, little pigs, let me in, let me in. But the little pig saw the wolf's narrow eyes through the keyhole, so the answered back, no, 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 not by the hairs on her chinny chin chin. So the wolf showed his teeth and he said, then I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house down. Well, he huffed and he puffed, he puffed and he huffed, and he huffed and he huffed, and he puffed and he puffed, but he could not blow the house down. At last, he was so out of breath that he couldn't huff and he couldn't puff any more at all. So he stopped to rest and thought a bit. This was too much. The wolf danced about with rage and swore he would come down the chimney and eat up the little pigs for his supper. But while he was climbing up onto the roof, the little pig made up a blazing fire and put on a big pot full of water to boil. Then, just as the wolf was coming down the chimney, the little piggy pulled off the lid and plop in fell the wolf into the scalding water. And that was the end of the big, bad, greedy wolf. Well... What can we learn from that story? Why don't you write down your answer and maybe discuss it with a friend or a patent and see what you come up with and see if your friend thinks of something different. Don't forget, if you can draw your favourite part of this story, do share it with me at KathleenPelly.com or on Instagram at KathleenPelly and be sure to use the hashtag JourneyWithStory on your picture so that I can find it easily. Cheerio then. Join me next time for Journey with Stories.